I have an uncle on Maui who can't see or walk very well, so I've been there about seven times in the past 13 years to help him out. And I've also been to Oahu a few times. I thought I'd make this video to share some helpful tips for people who are going to Hawaii for the first time. This video does not include every possible restaurant or beach to go to. I'm sure viewers are going to look in the comments below for any other tips, so feel free to write any of your recommendations. I'll be the first to admit that my voice is really boring, but my mom was voted class clown and class wit in high school, so I do have a sense of humor, although I'm very reserved. So I did add some of my humor to this video that will hopefully liven it up for you, and I honestly do think that I do have some good overall tips for people who are going to visit for the first time. Once I landed on Oahu, they had very clear signs and representatives pointing the way. The roped off area was for people who did not have the wristbands. The representatives will guide you to the correct area. There are plenty of signs to point you in the right direction. This sign shows that there are two different baggage claim areas. I followed the one to the right, which also led to ground transportation. It's a bit of a long, confusing walk to get out of the airport, but just follow the signs. I did not need this, but in case you have to go to the H gates, there is a shuttle. If you rented a car, you want to go across the way to the rental car shuttle area. Most major companies pick up from this area. There's a painted sign on the curb that shows that you're in the rental car location. And there's also a phone in case you need to call one of the agencies. Here are a few important tips. The most important thing to do on any Hawaiian island is to respect the locals nature, and animals. I'm not saying that all locals hate visitors, but you have to realize that some of them do, and acting like a clown who just escaped from Ringling Brothers Circus isn't going to help. You have to respect the animals also. I once saw some guy underwater at Black Rock at Kaunapali. Turtles don't like to be pet by frat bros or instahos, so back off. Here's a quick definition of two of the most common Hawaiian words you'll hear. Aloha, and mahalo. A lot of restaurants, food trucks, and stores only accept cash, so don't think you can just be like, do you have Apple Pay? Something to be aware of is a brown water advisory. This happens after a lot of rain, so if it looks dirty, I would suggest not going in. In addition to it being possibly contaminated, if you can't see through brown water, then sharks can't either, so they might bite your leg, and then it will be a red water advisory. There are a decent number of shark attacks, and sometimes they do lead to death, so be careful. Hawaii has a ban on certain type of sunscreens, so make sure you only buy the proper kind. If you're a pothead who wants to smoke in Hawaii, go to health.hawaii.gov to read the rules. Recreational pot is illegal in Hawaii. There are a few rules when it comes to driving on Hawaii. Basically, it's just to be polite and let people go ahead of you. And do not honk. The main highway is referred to as H1, and some of the locals say that they try to avoid it between 3 and 7 p.m. on weekdays because the traffic is really bad, especially going westbound. I'm showing this part so you can learn a lesson from my stupidity. There's one lane on each side, so if you're looking to the side at the mountains or the beach, when a car has to turn left, they have to wait for all the oncoming traffic to pass. So sometimes in front of you, there might be five to six cars that suddenly stop, like I almost rear-ended five cars here. Quite a few of the locals don't have cars, so they either use a motorcycle, moped, or bicycle. There seems to be a frequent number of accidents involving mopeds and motorcycles, so be careful when you're driving. Be aware at night that there might be people riding mopeds on the shoulder of the road. When somebody puts these flowers over your neck, don't say, I just got laid, because you're not going to. I look like I need to get laid in that picture. On Maui, I noticed that there are wild chickens and roosters in practically every parking lot. One time I was in the drive through at Kentucky Fried Chicken and I saw a chicken running away and I was like, run, are you going to turn it to a number three meal deal? Before your trip, I suggest that you check out and bookmark the website BigIslandNow.com. They have a lot of local news and might have some stuff that might be relevant to you in your trip. 
Hawaii in general is very windy, so be careful when you put a selfie stick up against a car because it's going to fall over. I've never taken the bus on Oahu, but if you go to the website thebus.org, you should be able to find some information. I'm fortunate that I have relatives on both Maui and Oahu, so I get to sleep for free on their floors. I only had to stay at a hotel once on Oahu for one night, and frankly, it was a dump. But my philosophy is, if you're not going to be in the room, why pay a ton of money for it? Be aware that there are some restrictions for Airbnb on Oahu. I went here once a few years ago. They force you to watch a video before you can go on the beach. Apparently they have a new process during quarantine and a lot of people are complaining on TripAdvisor. So I suggest you check out TripAdvisor and see other people's tips. When I went, I just wanted to go in the water, but as you can see, there's a lot of reefs and the water was really shallow when I went, so I didn't last very long at this beach. As you can see, when the sun isn't out, it doesn't look as nice. Kaimana Beach is somewhat near Waikiki. The entrance is located next to the War Memorial, which is no longer in use. There was decent parking at the park right outside. I went on a late afternoon and it was a relaxing area. Apparently this is more for locals than tourists. Lanakai Beach is my favorite beach that I've ever been to. There's a path next to this white house, and these are the cross streets. I, wasn't, I didn't even know what was happening. What, what was happening? So you just walk down this path. On the left, there's nowhere to go. The beach is fairly long, so I sped this part up. This area has some people about to go out on boats and paddle boards. There are two islands across the way that some people go out to. On this visit, I arrived at 9 a.m. When the midday sun shines down, the water looks a lot more beautiful. If you get sunburns, you have to be careful. Apparently my feet had not seen the sun in a few years. So after only about two hours here, the next day, it looked like my feet had three degree burns. So either put sunscreen on your feet or cover them up. When I was leaving, there was a helicopter that lifted somebody out of the water. And the mailman who was walking by said somebody got injured and that's how they get them. This is Kailua Beach over here. They're fairly close together and there's a path that you can walk on. Parking is hard to find in the neighborhood near Lanakai Beach. So you can park at Kailua and just walk over. Parking spots fill up pretty quick, so get there early. When I was on Kailua Beach, I saw this pit bull walking down the beach by itself. And as you can see, there's a guy holding a little dog right behind him because he was afraid that his dog was going to get eaten for brunch. Then a woman walked by and she said, don't worry about that pit bull. He lives nearby and takes himself for a walk. So if you're on Kailua Beach and you see a pit bull walking by itself, you don't have to call the cops. Although I've never done it, there's something called Lanakai Pillbox Trail that you can take a hike up to this area. This was on my way up the North Shore to Giovanni Shrimp Truck. I stopped at a few beaches, which frankly I don't remember the names of. This beach had a lot of waves and obviously a lot of surfers. I think this beach was near Ted's Bakery. Some people complain that Waikiki is way too crowded. I've only been there a few times. On my most recent trip, I went there at sunset, and I just laid in the edge of the water for about 30 minutes as the sun went down, and it was really relaxing. Since you're on vacation in a tropical location, you obviously want to get some awesome pictures. 
So I suggest the Face app, Face Editor, to make you look better than you actually do in real life. This app is good for editing photos, which you can then upload to social media, and your relatives will make comments like, that looks nothing like you, and then you can block them. Unfortunately, it didn't get rid of my moobs, or my forehead wrinkles, or my big butt, or my neck hair. This farmer's market is very close to Diamond Head. They have flowers, Mexican food, more Mexican food, Hawaiian ginger ale and mocktail, root beer floats. I like to try new things on vacation, so I tried the Lily Koi shake, and it was good. Not as good as McDonald's chocolate shake, but it was good. <laughs> Farmer's market over there. Diamond head. I saw one of these in Waikiki. I did not rent one of these bikes, but you can check out the website or they have an app if you're interested. I parked at that little strip mall across the street. It was Saturday, so most of the businesses were closed. The one at Diamond Head seemed to be more about food, and this one seems to be more about arts and crafts. There's one market over there, and you cross the street to come over to this one. You can park in the lot on the side. There's a meter and you'll just put the receipt on your dashboard. I would say my favorite meal on Oahu is at Side Street Inn and they have signature garlic chicken that is really good and it's not that expensive for a lot of food. The garlic chicken is the plate at the bottom of this picture. This place is popular with the locals. I got the mixed plate and for $11.50, it was a good meal. There are several locations of L&L &L Hawaiian barbecue on Oahu. It was good, but I wouldn't say it was great, but it's definitely worth a try, not that expensive. Giovanni's Shrimp Truck is a popular food choice that has two different locations. I arrived a little after 11 a.m. and there wasn't a line, but it got really busy really quick. This was one of the messiest meals I've ever had in my life. They do not peel the shrimp. You have to do it yourself. I guess that's why it costs $16. I have to give honest reviews. I felt like this was a mess of a meal <laughs> and it didn't taste that great. I would not get it again, but if you like shrimp, which I do, you can give it a try. I climbed Diamond Head late one afternoon a few years ago. From what I remember, it wasn't that horrible of a hike. Their website says they close at 4 o'clock, but then they give another two hours for people who just got in to climb to the top and then come back down. But just realize if you get there after 4 o'clock, they're not going to let you pass the front gate. I went to the Honolulu Zoo a few years ago. It's $19 for adults, $11 for children. The only thing I remember are these turtles. <laughs> but it's close to Waikiki, and if you're looking for something to do, it's a decent experience for an hour or two. There are signs on the highway for Polly Lookout, although it comes up fairly quickly, so keep an eye out for it. 
Pali Lookout is about halfway in between Honolulu and Lanakai and Kailua beaches. It's a beautiful view, but it costs $7 to park, and I don't think it's worth it, to be honest. I've been there twice. (laughs) As you leave, make sure you bear right, because that's going to take you towards Honolulu. If you went left, it would have taken you on the other side of the highway toward Kailua Beach. I went to Hawaii a few years ago with my mom, and we had a lot of fun at Sea Life Park, mostly in the photo booth when we were cracking each other up, and it's some of my favorite pictures ever with my mom. A cool thing was going in this enclosure with birds. The park gave these sticks with food on it, and the birds would land on your hand. It was pretty cute. We did one of the dolphin experiences. It wasn't the one where you go in the water and swim with them. It was basically watching the trainer do stuff with a dolphin, and then we all just got a quick picture at the end. A few years ago, I went to the Manoa Chocolate Store. They give tours for $15 a person, but they were not doing one at the time that I arrived. They do require reservations. It's been quite a few years, but I'm almost certain they're on the second floor of this building. I got a few different chocolate bars, and they weren't cheap, but it was good. If you have children, it might be an interesting experience. On prior visits to Oahu, people told me to try out the Polynesian Cultural Center, and I didn't really think it was something that I would enjoy. But I went this last visit, and it was pretty cool. Park on the right for free all-day parking. They have quite a few stores inside. I should have gotten this ice cream when there was no line because there was one person working, and it took like 20 minutes later, so get that ice cream while you can. You want to walk over to this corner and look for the building that says ticketing on top. Then you come back to the main area and you're going to check in on the left there. It was fairly quick for security and checking tickets. They have plenty of signs to tell you where to go. And there are guides along the way. They'll also give you a map or there is an app you can download. They have several different buildings that represent different islands and their history. You can participate in certain activities or just watch and learn. Shake it, girl. As you can see, it's a beautiful area. I was there for about two hours total. And I got the lowest cost package and it was still pretty expensive, but it was a nice experience and I would suggest that people do it, especially if you have kids. I'm not usually into this type of thing, but I thought it'd be an interesting experience, and it sure was. They don't charge anything for tickets, they just ask that you donate $10. So when you pull up, you'll have to stop. I told them that I was going to the next thing, and I did not have to pay for the parking. You have to pay if you're just going to Manoa Falls. At the end of the driveway is this building where you just check in. I think this was my first mistake, was making a left here. As you'll see, this was a disaster at certain points, but we'll see how it ends. I was expecting more of like gardens and stuff, but it had some really beautiful areas. Frankly, I didn't really even bother to read any of the signs. Maybe that's why you got lost, you dope. So lost. Wasn't the show Lost filmed in Hawaii? At least they don't have snakes, right? I'm scared. These rocks are kind of sharp, so I would suggest wearing extremely comfortable sneakers and not flip-flops or slippers. 
do not bring children on this walk because you're going to want to leave them behind because they're going to complain and fall and get a boo-boo. There's no way kids would go up and down this thing. Falling rocks. I'm more concerned about falling people. All right, so I reached a section where there's nowhere else to go. It's kind of confusing to know if this is even part of a trail. There's no signs. Yeah, I have no clue where I am, so I'm heading back. I would say that waterfall thing is where you should turn around. Should I scare these people? This was the place that it was at the top. This is the Hawaiian section. Make sure all of your items are securely in your pants or your shorts or leave it in the car because if you lose something in here, you're probably never gonna find it. If anybody has problems walking, I would not suggest these higher up trails. At the end of the trail, they have marijuana plants and you're allowed to take free samples. Dick's Loop. This is Oprah's backyard. This is actually the nicest part of the trail. Finally, after almost an hour. Although I have no, oh, here we go. The hell is that? I'm scared. All right, this is a pretty section that is worth the entire hour's hike. That spot was called Inspiration Point. And I'm inspired to get out of here and go to the beach. Bye, girl, bye. So I was off the main trail the entire time. So you enter the parking lot there and the main trail starts to the right there. I started over by the visitor center. At this point, you walk to the left to get to the falls. This Manoa Falls Trail, so much more brutal than that other one. I can't remember what I was on. Duh, it was just five minutes earlier. It was the Lion Arboretum. So as I was leaving that, I saw this parking lot and I decided to check it out. And that was a mistake because, I mean, look at that. It might look cooler when it rains a lot, but it was kind of a disappointment to me. There were a ton of kids complaining about having to walk and a few adults. I think it took about 15 to 20 minutes to walk from the parking lot to the falls. But I walk fast and I was going probably twice as fast as most people, so it might take up to a half hour with kids. Kualoa Ranch is on the northeast side of the island. It's a huge property. Quite a few TV shows and movies have been filmed there, including Jurassic Park. You may want to pause to read these descriptions. I didn't feel like spending a lot of money, so I went with the Malama experience since it also seemed to be the most interesting. Before our experience started, I just walked around a little bit and there's some turtles and a pig and a donkey and a goat. You know. So you get in one of these Jeeps to go to your area. So I do have a chance to do that. We pulled over at a certain point and she had us try some star fruit right off of the trees. It was good. So we just kind of did a loop and came around. This area here, this is our fish pond. This is where we eat pond. This is where they filmed the Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore movie, Fifty First Dates. I think our guide's name was Evie. She was so awesome, really knowledgeable, really fun. I highly suggest taking one of her tours. 
This is where they have a bunch of fish. This is the area where the main experience is. All what we call hakipu'u. And everything that's in between is very, uh, what we say, momona. Momona being, uh, momona can mean fat, but it also means rich and lots of. And uh, vai vai, vai vai means very wealthy. Vai is water. So when you have vai vai, you have lots of water, you are also known as being wealthy. Although I was looking forward to trying something new, I decided just to let my uncle go in the water and get dirty. <laughs> just be aware that your shoes will probably get ruined. They do have a hose where you can wipe off your shoes and mud at the end of the experience, but just know that your shoes will never be the same. They have different activities on different days depending on what needs to be done in this area. On the day we went, she had my uncle take out a taro plant. When you're planning a trip, you obviously want to know about how much it's going to cost. So I'm going to share with you the cost of my most recent trip. I spent five days on Oahu and three days on Maui. I did get a discount on my flights because I had about $300 in vouchers. Also, like I said, I didn't have to pay for any lodging other than a $100 gift card I gave to my coworker. The eight day total came to a little over $1,600. If I had to pay for a full round trip fare and lodging, this could have been three to $4,000. Nobody likes when it rains on their vacation but Hawaii has the most incredible rainbows I've ever seen.